This year, one film dares to ask the question, how much do you like Willem Dafoe? This is the review of Inside. What's up, everybody? It's my movie trailer guy voice. My movie trailer guy hasn't been around for a while. I haven't heard a movie trailer guy trailer in a long time. What happened to him? Where did he go? Anyway, um, like I said, this is a review of Inside. And... Uh, it's on Peacock, and it has audio description, and if you haven't clicked that subscribe button yet, I'm very sad. I'm sad. I have a sad face. Just, it's beneath the happy one. Um, I, I, you know, I've been doing this thing where I don't pick shitty movies. I'm trying actively to not pick films that look terrible, and... If basically what I said at the top is true, it tests how much I like actually Willem Dafoe because yeah, I like Willem Dafoe enough to watch this film. It's also a film that basically is just Willem Dafoe. It's one of those films where it's almost entirely set in one location with one actor. And we've seen this before um, with a lot of other films like uh, Tom Hardy's Lock comes to mind. Uh, right away for me, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Buried comes to mind. Um, uh, John Cho and Searching, where basically it's just like one person who has to carry the whole film. So, uh, this time it's Willem Dafoe, and he starts up, up off the top of the film, making you think it's going to be like an art film, a film about art or thievery, uh, if you will. And, uh, basically becomes about being stuck in hell. <laughs> in a, in a, in a smart, uh, smart house type, uh, place that he can't control and he can't get out of. And obviously has a limited amount of resources. And you start asking yourself questions like, when are the people coming back? Like, how long are they planning on being gone from this place? <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like, damn, how much is on vacation? They, like, they, like, live somewhere else half the year. <laughs> because he's been in here way too long. Um, I guess that's, like, slightly a spoiler. But, yeah, it does. It takes, it, it, it takes place over, like, a longer period of time. Where he has to, like, uh, learn to survive inside this place with the given... Um, with what this uh, place that he gets locked into uh, lets him, gives him, has for him what's already there. He can't acquire anything new. Um, there are other people that appear in sort of like dream sequence type stuff. And also he watches people on security monitors. Um, he does have a partner at the top who's a voice. Uh, that dude disappears right away. That dude's like, well, you're locked in. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I was like, he's a, that dude's a ton of help. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's basically in the, in the thing, the whole film. Um, that's the premise of the film. It's, I guess, slightly spoilery, but he gets locked in pretty quickly. Um, sorry. So if you felt like that's a spoiler, that's... I don't know how else to tell you what the movie's about. I mean, the movie's the movie is about him being trapped inside this penthouse apartment. It's not about anything else. I, I I would I'd love to say it's about you know stealing art, but it's it's really not. Um, I mean, that's why he's there, but he's not. It's not like he's always trying to steal art the whole film. <laughs> the film is not. It doesn't go through like the history of him as an art thief. That's not it. Uh, it doesn't meditate on art a whole lot and go through, uh, like, the history of paintings. You know, no, nothing like that. It's, it's, he has to figure out different ways of surviving in, in, this, in this penthouse based on what, what he has access to, what food was left behind, what, what water he has access to, a lot of that stuff. And, and it's all controlled by, like, a smart 
a smart house that has a thermometer that radically changes temperature while he is there and he's always having to adapt to the temperature of the apartment um and that's basically i mean that's the film uh is him trying to figure out a way out where there is no way out like how do you get out of something where you're pretty sure there is no way to get out of it and uh it means that the film is anchored by Willem Dafoe's performance films like this don't work if they're long I should say um and Inside runs probably about the length that it was supposed to but I kind of also felt like it ran a little bit long um because you're gonna feel that with any film where you're just having to watch one person because they end up sort of doing things repetitively because you have to see them trying to do something sort of towards the beginning when they have a little bit more of their sanity. And then you see them doing it later on when they have sort of given up all hope. Um, you know, because they're trying to show like the passage of time. And so the only way to see the passage of time, I guess, is to be absorbed in this world for a certain period of time. Uh, that is however long the filmmaker feels they need to show you how how you can be beaten down by any circumstance. It seems like this posh penthouse apartment would be heaven to be in. It's not. You know, that's the, that's the, that's the thing he's sending home to you, is uh, sometimes all that glitters is not gold. <laughs> um... But it's a good performance from Willem Dafoe. Uh, it has to be, because he's the whole film. <laughs> so without that... And to be honest, this film is hovering, is hovering positive. It's hovering positive at Rotten Tomatoes. That was like a 63% fresh. So it's just slightly fresh at Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, and I can see that. Uh, you know, the gimmick of doing the one person in the film thing, this feels like something that would have been made during the pandemic and would have been really easy to make because you just put Willem Dafoe in an apartment and you follow him around with a camera. Um, pretty much that's the film. Uh, it feels like a pandemic film that was like left over and was finally released. Something they were like, oh, we can't make a movie right now because we have too many, we can't get all these people together and there was some enterprising director that was like, I have an idea. I just need Willem Dafoe in an, app in an apartment <laughs> and a camera, and I'm good to go. Um, and uh, they make this film, so... Some of it gets weird. I mean, I'm, honestly, this film gets weird as Willem Dafoe starts to... And that's sort of what sets it apart from some of the other films, is that they all feel very... Um, the time constraints makes it more uh, urgent because like some of the films that I named before like Lock, Buried and Searching all have to happen within a, a certain period of time whereas this is he's here this one's a little bit more like Moon in that regard where you see somebody slowly degrading over the course of of a longer period of time, which means his mind is degrading, which means he's starting to think and see things that um, don't really make sense. Uh, and some things really don't make sense. And we also just never get a, cl a clear answer as to what the is going on in this film. Um, I, and I, I don't want to spoil anything. It's really hard to talk about the couple, the tiny little elements. But you'll see some things where you're like, what? What? Um, <laughs> and uh, the film doesn't necessarily feel the need to explain everything to you. It's just sort of is like, yeah, well, is it real? I don't know. He's been here a while. He's starting to go a little crazy. A little, a little mad. He's... He's losing the marbles. <laughs> Maybe this isn't even real. And you're like, oh, all right. 
um, probably the biggest thought that I had was, are they ever coming back to their house? <laughs> like, that was the biggest thing. That, I was like, are they coming back? Ever? Um, and, uh, in a world of technology where, you know, our, our door cams and everything, our ring doorbells, you have the ability to sort of like view that from your phone. I'm sort of like, so these people, they have this tremendous security system where they can see, but it like malfunctions. Can they not check out their, is no one... Did they not get, like, a notification that their system malfunctioned? Has he not sent anybody over to to take a look, a look-see, to try to, you know... I don't know, like, the whole thing that about that there are some people that, that own this apartment and yet have apparently no desire to ever return or check in on it is, um, I know that there are people that are, like, stupid rich, but that still feels, still feels a little bit like a stretch to me. Uh, especially when your penthouse apartment, uh, contains priceless art. So, I feel like you're probably gonna be like, ah, I, why is it offline? Should I check on that? Probably. I should probably see that. So, I, I feel like that's the only thing about inside where I, I I just couldn't buy into that. I couldn't buy into the fact that because this takes place over um I mean I don't know how many months, but I feel like he's there for a couple months. He's there for at least a month. At least. There's no way he loses that much weight that quickly. Uh, I know Willem Dafoe's skinny, but they, they comment on how skinny he gets by the end of the film, and uh, I just don't think you can get there in 30 days, uh, in under 30 days or anything like that, without, you know, um, I just don't think that's possible. So, anyway, um, because he has food, he has access to food, so... Uh, it's not like he's not eating. He would need a longer period of time because he needs the food to run out. And then he needs to starve. Anyway. That's it. That's inside. Um, if you like Willem Dafoe, uh, then you'll like this movie. At least somewhat. I mean, you might be frustrated with elements of it, but he carries the whole film because he's the only person that's really in the film. Yes, there are other, like, human beings that, like, float through the film in some regard but I wouldn't say they're characters I would say he's the only character in the film so the audio description on this was fine and also weird um <laughs> the audio description uh it realizes it's like they know they they know uh, that that this film takes place in the same apartment the whole time with one actor. So you're going to get uh, gradually more and more description about the place and about him as the film goes on. Like, I think I got eye color like 30 minutes in, which is weird. Because it's like, I've already been introduced to him. He's been on camera this whole time. He's had dialogue. I feel like we've gotten to know each other. And then all of a sudden, they're just like, bam, here's his eye color. And I'm like, oh, we're getting eye color this deep. Um, so yeah, it becomes one of those films where you really do get a lot of description. Because there's nothing else to describe. They just keep describing the same location <laughs> the same person to you over and over and at a certain point I think they feel like they've described every element about him and about the the world in which he now exists and there's really nothing else they can describe they're like I don't know what else we got I don't know I feel like we covered we covered wallpaper uh the furniture uh we covered you know like it's just it's all there uh they Look, they talk about the paintings, they talk about photos, and it's just, uh, everything is, it's actually quite descriptive, um, 
if you piece it all together. It's sort of like, like I've been watching, <laughs> I've been watching Golden Girls, and it's sort of like if you go through and you take all of Rose's stories about St. Olaf, you can make one hell of a little book about St. Olaf and all the things that went on there, but you have to pay attention to the whole series. And then once you've done that and you take all of her comments, then you're like, wow, I really actually know quite a bit about St. Olaf. <laughs> Um, here, yeah, it's kind of just spread out. It's not going to hit you all at once because then what, what is it doing for the rest of the film? You know, <laughs> it has nowhere else to go and no one else is going to come into the film. So <laughs> you're just uh, slowly throughout the course of the film, you're going to learn a little bit more about him and you're going to learn a little bit more about the, the, the penthouse apartment. So it's interesting. It's very interesting audio description. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was decent. I thought it was fine. It was good. Um, so, anyway, um, the, I, I I don't know. As far as films where people are stuck in one location, one film, one one location type films, this is not my favorite. Um, I think this film tries to because it has Willem Dafoe. It tries to do the whole. Um, ooh, let's make this artsy, let's, let's, uh, let's go off the beaten path, let's try to do something, and I don't feel like they necessarily tied things together in a way, or made it made sense, um, in order for that to really truly happen, so, uh, it just kind of fell a little bit short for me, but, uh, it's mostly powered by a great performance by Willem Dafoe, so. Yep. Uh, I'm going to give Inside a B-. minus. So, um, it's pretty decent. It's just not, I, I'm not going to jump out of my skin to see it again, but uh, I would give it, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, why not? You know? Anyway. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'm assuming now you've clicked that subscribe button after I asked you to at the top of the video because you seem like you seem like good people. And I also have a website, MagnumMovieGuy.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at MagnumMovieGuy. You can go to the audio description project, ADD.ACB.org. It'll let you know what is audio description and where you can watch it. And you can go to the Adna.org. That's the ADNA.org. And it'll let you know who is describing your favorite films and television series that's it for me today i will uh review something else for you guys and see you on the other side or the other inside <laughs> wordplay <laughs> gotcha